Okay, here we're going to be looking at intercompany or affiliated companies merchandise sales and the accounting for consolidated financial statements when we have these intercompany sales here. So what do we mean here? Well, we would have, uh, say for example, we'd have a subsidiary company and a parent company and we have sales between the two. Uh, say for example, the subsidiary company is selling to the parent company or it could be the parent company selling to the subsidiary company. So just looking at our example here, say for example the uh, corporation P the parent purchases goods here from corporation S the subsidiary. So we would have an intercompany transaction and when the financial statements of the affiliated companies, that's the parent and the subsidiary, here are consolidated, such sales become a transfer of goods within the consolidated entity. So going down here and looking at our flow diagram, uh, we have Corporation S here, the subsidiary selling to Corporation P here, the parent. So what's involved here? So Corporation S has an inventory account here, and when they make the sale here to Corporation P, they also have a cost of goods sold account here, and then their sales account here. And this sales account here would flow into Corporation P's inventory account. And then after Corporation P makes the sales to an outside party, here. Of course you have the cost of goods sold here for the, the inventory here purchased from Corporation S, the subsidiary, and then you have your sales account here. And then you also have how the Corporation P and Corporation S here are going to exchange or pay for these goods. So in the case here of Corporation P, they're going to pay for them here on an accounts payable. And then associated with that, the subsidiary corporation here, Corporation S, would have a, an, an accounts receivable. Okay, when making our consolidation, in this case between the parent corp and the subsidiary corp on the sales made between the two here, what we have to focus in here is on this inventory here, our inventory account here for the parent corporation. And that's the, uh, the inventory that would be uh, sold here from the subsidiary to the parent here. And what is sitting in this inventory affects how we calculate here our cost of goods sold here on the uh, sales made to the parent here by the subsidiary and also the cost of goods sold here um, by the parent to outside sources or outside sales here. So in this inventory here we really have uh, four different cases to look at. First would be where you have no beginning or ending inventory based on the sales here from the subsidiary to the parent. Secondly, you would have goods remaining here in the ending inventory on those sales. And then thirdly, you could have goods either in the beginning and in, or in both beginning and ending inventory here for the sales. And then fourth would be a periodic inventory with beginning and ending inventory on those sales. When accounting for these intercompany sales, and for example here, a Corporation S, the subsidiary, was selling to Corporation P, the parent. The first thing we have to be concerned with is the intercompany sales must be eliminated to avoid double accounting. So uh, the subsidiary here, Corporation S, their sales here have to be eliminated. And then uh, the other thing we have to note here is that a uh, no profit can be recognized on these inter company sales until the profit is re realized by a sale to an outside party here. So the parent corporation has to make a sale here to the outside party before we can recognize any profit here on this intercompany sales. And then thirdly here, uh, sales made on credit, that would be the accounts receivable and accounts payable here for the subsidiary here and the parent. This is an internal debt and this must be eliminated. So the accounts payable here for the parent corporation and the accounts receivable here for the subsidiary on this sale have to be eliminated. And then one last point here, the consolidated cost of goods sold, uh, that would be uh, what the uh, uh, subsidiary has here for a cost of goods sold. That includes only inventoried costs like labor, material, and overhead, and it may not include any profit. Okay, let's look at the first case scenario here for a corporation P or the parent's inventory account where there'd be no beginning or ending inventory remaining here on those purchases here from the subsidiary corporation. So subsidiary corporation would have made a sale here to the parent corporation here and that inventory uh, would have 
totally been sold to outside sources here. So the parent corporation would have sold all this inventory to an outside source. So there's no beginning or ending inventory remaining on the purchases here from the subsidiary corporation. Okay, now for our consolidation eliminations. We have to eliminate any intercompany sales here and any profit made on those sales. That would be the profit that the subsidiary corporation corporation made when they sold uh, merchandise here to the parent corporation. So first let's go down and calculate the profit that was made on that on those sales here by the subsidiary. So Corp uh, P or the parent recorded a cost of goods sold to the outside parties at $200,000 in this case and that was the sales that uh, the subcorporation sold to the parent corporation here that was held in inventory. So that inventory of 200,000 was moved over here to the cost of goods sold for those sales, the sales made to the outside parties here. So uh, those uh, that cost of goods cold here or those sales of $200,000 contained $40,000 worth of profit here for the sub corporation here. So the sales of 200,000 less the cost of goods sold in this case it was 160,000 for those sales gave us a profit here of $40,000 for the sub uh, corporation here and that has to be eliminated. All right now for our elimination entries since all the uh, intercompany here purchases were sold to outside sources we can eliminate the total sales here between the that were intercompany sales that were made here between the subsidiary corporation and the parent corporation so what we would go down here is we would debit our sales here for that two hundred thousand dollars the total amount here and then we would credit the cost of goods sold for those sales here of a hundred sixty thousand dollars to eliminate it and then the balancing amount here would be forty thousand dollars that would go to credit or reduce the cost of goods sold here for the outside sales and that forty thousand dollars here was the uh, profit uh, made here on this by the sub corporation on the sales to the parent corporation and then we'd also have to elim eliminate here any inner company debt and those would be the accounts receivable and accounts payable on those sales here. So in the case here of the uh, $200,000 purchased amount here uh, by uh, this a corporation or the parent corporation here from the subsidiary they would have paid $150,000 on that. So what was remaining here was $50,000 on the accounts payable and then we'd have the same, same balancing amount here in accounts receivable by the subsidiary corporation. So all we would do is go in and we'd uh, debit accounts payable for fifty thousand dollars and then we'd credit accounts receivable here for a hundred or fifty thousand dollars so that would eliminate any of the uh, intercompany sales here and any profit on those sales as well as any internal debt here that was a result of those sales all right, to carry these adjustments over to our consolidation worksheet here. For first for the accounts receivable, we would accredit that for fifty thousand dollars, and then the balancing amount here would go to a pound accounts payable here debit that for fifty thousand dollars and then to eliminate our sales here against the cost of goods sold we had sales here of two hundred thousand dollars we would debit that for two hundred thousand dollars sales here and then we'd credit cost of goods sold here for two hundred thousand dollars even though it was broken broken down here a hundred and sixty thousand dollars for the cost of goods sold here and those sales to the parent corporation and also that profit here of cost of goods sold of forty thousand dollars that's just lumped in here into two hundred thousand dollars for the cost of goods sold and then as far as our income that was generated here and how it would be distributed first for the sub subsidiary corporation they had internally generated income here of hundred fifty thousand dollars there were no adjustments in this case so all we would take the uh, would be the non-controlling interest share uh, 20 percent of the hundred fifty thousand that gives us a non-controlling interest share here of thirty thousand dollars and then for the internally generated income come here or for the parent corporation P or the parent corporation here they had internally generated income here of two hundred thousand dollars and then they would receive eighty percent here of the subsidiary corporations income here of a hundred fifty thousand dollars so that would leave us with a hundred twenty thousand so the total amount here for the controlling interest would be three hundred and twenty thousand dollars for the income <laughs>